Good morning, Century 21 New Millennium. It is June. We are halfway or almost halfway through the year. And uh, before we jump into anything, I just want to take a moment and thank everybody. We are having another phenomenal year. Uh, that is in uh, no small part due to the fact that we have such incredible teamwork and so many people that are dedicated to this. You know, from the agents who are working nights, weekends, uh, incredibly long hours right now, you know, people are carrying caseloads of a huge number of transactions and still servicing clients, uh, to our uh, office staffs who are at their max right now. We have a level of involvement from our office staff that I don't think it, it, it's not even comparable. I don't even think that other office staffs are even involved in relocation around other, other companies that I know of. Our branch leadership, who takes such an active role and, and actually does the assignments of our of our leads, which is different than other companies. Our accounting department that supports this. Uh, our, our marketing efforts that support this. Uh, you name it up and down the line, all the way up to Todd and Mary Lynn, who provide a platform for all of us to be successful in. So thank you to everybody. I'll try to thank you uh, by also trying to go through quickly, knowing that you're busy. I don't think I'm letting anybody in on a secret to let you know that the market is hot. Uh, we had done in May this year 238 settlements. That's versus 220 in May of last year. And we were, we were putting record numbers forward last year. So while it may not seem like a huge increase, it's an increase. Uh, and it's just year after year after year. And here's where it starts to get good. If you look at our June, we're looking at 341 settlements versus 280 of June last year. 280 last year is our all-time high. That's the most we've ever done, and we're looking at 341 this June. Uh, our leads total are up 22%. Uh, that does not include some lead router leads that we've been putting in, and I just want to tell people that we're doing really well here. We're starting to figure this thing out. Uh, we put in about 50 scrubbed qualified leads, so we have somebody who's calling these people, getting in touch with them, and putting them out uh, to our agents. Uh, you may be getting some of these. You may choose not to work on them. But we're up to a 13% conversion rate on our lead router, and that continues to climb. The industry average on electronic leads is about 3 to 4%. So we're starting to do something right here and really, uh, you know, getting a, you know, a 400% difference in terms of the number of closings that we're getting out of this. So i uh, give you a perspective. We're getting, you know, hundreds and hundreds of leads per month and only 50 of them are going in. So the rest of them are being incubated into a system where uh, we're sending out regular communications to these people to try to keep them engaged and, uh, and get them to you when they're ready. Uh, of those transactions that I'm talking about, it's probably also not a surprise that most of them are affinity based. In fact, 72% of all of our transactions so far this year are affinity based. 53% of them are USAA, 17% of them are NFCU, and 2% come from other affinity programs. Most common that you might have heard of are Chase or Discover. But bottom line, our top two clients, the people that really help us make uh, a lot of money and bring a lot of success to our company, are the Movers Advantage Program, USAA, and the Navy Federal Credit Union Realty Plus Program. Important that we always, always distinguish that while both of these are serviced by CARDIS, they are two very separate and totally different companies, uh, and they don't want to be mixed up with one of another. So make sure that we're always referring to our Movers Advantage as uh, our USAA people as Movers Advantage and our Navy Federal Credit Union as Realty Plus, and try not to mix and match. I know we got a lot going on. It's really easy to send somebody the wrong thing and set the wrong impression. Uh, we've got goals with these companies, right? If somebody's going to put, uh, you know, a three-quarter of a billion dollar pipeline to our, you know, to our company, um, they sure want to know that we're going to do something well with it and that we're going to support them back. So the goals in Affinity are to have a 55% buyer conversion rate. Um, as, a, as a company, we are at 47%. And while that's not making goal, it's very good. We can do better. Uh, we have offices where we are doing better. 
It's the details, it's digging in, it's finding that other deal, it's the long-term incubation, it's calling them fast before they get activated with somebody else. But we're doing a very good job. We're going to continue always to push and, and get to those goals. We have a 40% seller conversion goal. Uh, our company right now is at 37%. So uh, all of the work that you guys are doing is paying off all of those listing presentations. It's really hard to be in the business. It's hard to do anything and have somebody come to you and say, I think we can do better. Um, and that's a really, that's a hard thing. But if, if a true professional uh, you know, I don't care. Jerry Rice uh, was a great wide receiver for the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, that guy never stopped getting better until the day that he retired. Uh, worked on his running of his routes. He never let rest it on his laurels. And that's something that we're never going to do either. We have a service goal of 90%. Um, and our company is at 88%. Uh, that's actually something that, well, it's it's good and and it's you know it's in the uh, it's in the strike range and it's probably above what other people are doing. I'm actually a little disappointed in that number. I know that we can make 90 percent. I challenge everybody uh, to obviously get our surveys returned. We've worked on that as a company. We do a very good job, but there's difficult clients that you work with, even some clients that probably aren't going to buy anything. Uh, but they've got to walk away from our company feeling good. And that's really what you're talking about when you're talking about how to service this account and how to get to a 90% goal. Uh, there's certain customers that will come through, we'll do a good job for them, we'll find them the house, we'll represent them the right way, and they will have nothing but fantastic things to say about us. There's other customers that no matter what you do, uh, they may not be the happiest of all people, and it's really hard to please them. That's what 90% is about. 90% is about being professional, controlling your emotions, giving them a level of service, and making sure that uh, at the end of the day, we find that two to three extra percent that say, you know what, those guys are really good. I'm not an easy person to please, but I, there's just nothing that I can say other than these guys were fantastic. Um, enrolling clients into our Navy Federal and USAA program, we have a goal of doing 142 transactions. We've done 38 so far, so we're probably not going to make this goal as a company. Uh, we did not make this goal as a company last year, and uh, I think that we're going to do it, have some improvement against the percentage of the goal. But again, go back to what we were talking about. 72% of our transactions come from Affinity. These are goals that we have to take very seriously and that we have to do our very best uh, to either meet or be very, very close to. So AGRs are something that we're improving on. We've tried to uh, lighten uh, the exposure for you in terms of uh, the dollars that are paid. You'll get your full split. There is no uh, extra commission charged on these. And uh, so we're doing the best that we can there. But that's where we are at 38 total. Uh, we have a 65% mortgage capture goal, and our company is at 56%. For a large company, that's very good. Uh, the goals are aggressive, guys. They're doable, but they're aggressive. So 56 is very good, but we really need to be in that 60% in that strike range. More importantly than anything else, we have to follow that save the deal process, and I've got a few, a few things to talk to you about there. I want to make sure that I take a moment and just explain to you why we're so detailed and, and probably rigid on how we label things and what goes into an email and who we want it sent to and all of those things. But we ask you to do mortgage escalations, right? A mortgage escalation is this person is already engaged with USAA. They've got a, they've got a loan going and something has gone wrong. A lot of times we get that sent as save the deal. And it's not a save the deal. Uh, I, I know that people threaten with uh, with 15 days left to closing. Geez, these people are so angry they're going to walk away and go somewhere else. And and that might even be true. Uh, but bottom line, it's an escalation. We already have those people in the pipeline, and we need to get it corrected. Something has gone wrong in the service, and so we want you to label it as a mortgage escalation right in the subject line with the name of the person and the file number. I wrote down Joe Sunday. Remember Joe Sunday? I think that's the right name. The guy from Dragnet. Just the facts, ma'am, and only the facts. 
it's really important that we do that. I, a lot of times we get a, a litany and of, of you know what has happened to date and all the problems that we've had for the last 30 days. And I, I understand that I am not putting that down. I, I, I totally understand how these things get to a level uh, that they shouldn't get to. But once we get to where we have a problem, what's really important, what I'm really asking you to do is say, you know what, we've had a lot of problems up to date. I'm not going to go into that. Bottom line, you need to know that this customer is already not happy. And here's where we are today. This is the settlement date that we have. And these are the things that I'm asking for help with to make sure we get that done and get a settlement uh, you know, down and, and get these members serviced correctly. The shorter and more direct you can be, the quicker we can help you. A lot of times we're going to go in, if you've, if you've written a really, really long email and it's got a lot of emotional things in there, we're probably going to have to go in there and edit it and shorten it up. Uh, we're sending it to bank uh, employees and bottom line, the quicker, the, the way that they think is quick and easy, what, what do I, what is it that I'm being asked to do here? So we ask you to send that to relo at c21nm.com. Uh, many times you guys are sending it to your manager. You're sending it directly to me. Uh, you're trying to send it directly to John Carney. That's a mistake. You can copy any one of those people. Um, you can resend it and say, hey, I've sent this, but I want you to specifically see it. But you have to get it to relo at c21nm.com. Why? Because once you get it to c21nm.com, it's going to be handled by one of our uh, affinity coordinators. And they're going to look in and they're going to escalate it directly to CARDIS. And CARDIS has a liaison, a USAA manager that they work with directly, who they can forward it to and who will guarantee get it to your processor and get it to their manager. And it happens every time and it happens quickly. If you send it to me or you send it to John Carney, John Carney is on the road a lot. You see him in the offices. Guess what? He is not reading his email and doing mortgage escalations when he's there with you in the office, and he's not reading his email and doing mortgage escalations when he's at other people's offices. So it's a mistake to go to directly to these people. Please go to Reloat. When you send it to Reloat, we're going to copy Cardis immediately, and we're going to copy John Carney immediately. No matter how small or trivial it is, John Carney gets copied on everything, it also then gets recorded in the notes of Relospec and then also recorded and given to the USAA rec, so the person who may also be on the line with the customer from USAA. And it's just a standard process that's going to get followed that way. The next step is obviously that we're going to get an answer back. We may like that answer or we may not like that answer. If we like the answer, hey, job well done, and we're off and running and go on to the next thing. If we don't like the answer, that's when we can start making phone calls to John Carney and above. But I can never make that phone call until step two has happened. If I call, if I go right to step three, the first question they're going to ask me is, have you escalated this through the normal process? And if I say no, they're going to say, I need you to do that first. So please, 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 please copy Relo at. I wouldn't say it as many times as I'm saying it if it wasn't happening you know, on a regular basis. A tendency is when we have a really you know, tricky file, let's skip all these steps and go straight to John Carney. Please don't do that. It's, it's not helping your member and it's not helping you and it's gonna slow things down. Just to give you a really quick idea, if you come into our whole team is connected to that Reloat inbox, and here's kind of what it looks like. If you go to the Reloat inbox, you're going to see all of the stuff that's in here, and the whole team is looking through here. They're looking for a specific thing, so they've got a priority of, of what needs to get done for the day. So as they're looking through, they're going to see save the deal, or they're going to see mortgage escalation. If it says mortgage escalation, they're going to go faster than if it says save the deal. If it says save the deal, we're trying to get it to that save the deal team by about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So that may not be acted on right away. So if you've got a really tense situation where the person is closing tomorrow and you mislabel it and write save the deal, we may not be jumping to that quite as quickly. So that's um, something that I think is important for you to know. Um, the next would be 
just looking at our save the deal process, I want to run you through that as well. When you have a save the deal, same thing, right? We want it labeled. Save the deal, the Smiths, their file number. And then the key pieces of information that we're going to want is, number one, do we have permission to call that client? Because somebody's going to make a phone call to them, and we don't want to irritate that person with, I had no idea I was going to be called by a, by a fairly aggressive sales team to talk to me about whether or not I can, can use USAA. If you know who the competitor is and the details of, of anything that's been offered by that competitor, that's in really important information that we definitely need. We need a best contact number and time, uh, and that's pretty much the information that we're going to need. Um, obviously, there are some tricky situations where we're going to need some more detail. Again, those go to Reloat. You can send them to anybody else that you want, but it's a process. There's a portal for escalations. Our affinity coordinator will fill it out for you. Most companies train the agents to do this. you got to know where it is and, and be able to access it from your smartphone. We don't do that. Send an email to Reloat, and we'll do it for you. Uh, when we fill that portal out, John Carney, again, is automatically copied. And then we record all of that information in the notes, and we record that your branch has done the save the deal and what the reason was for that. So if somehow we don't get the loan, we'll understand why that happened and that we did our best to try to, try to uh, bring it around. When you get that phone call that there should be customer contact and attempt within 24 hours, this is something that's really increased and, and they're doing a much better job. That phone call is happening consistently. Uh, not always are we finding out that that phone call was that happened and we're working on that. I know that we need to improve there. We are trying to track that information down. Uh, it's They're not as good as they could be there, and I'm just admitting that to you, and we'll get better. Some things that you may not know about the Save the Deal team that you need to know. First of all, I think this is hugely important. If you understand the business, the Save the Deal team is incented per settlement. I'm going to say that again. The Save the Deal team is incented per settlement. It's not a salaried employee who's sitting around thinking about their 9-to-5 job. They need the deal to actually close in order to get paid. That is a very good thing in our industry. Um, to do that, they have access to shorter time frames. So if you're calling the standard number and USAA says, we can't get this done, it's, it's, gonna, it's 45 days and you need a 38-day settlement, the Save the Deal team might be able to do that where the standard person quoting cannot. Um, they also have access to beat the competitor's rates where the standard quoter may not. So if you feel like you've done your due diligence by calling the 800 number, you really haven't. You've got to get it to this team by doing a save the deal. And big, big improvement. Originally, the save the deal team was not really the most experienced originators. Now they are. So you've got experienced people who understand how to do some deal doctoring, how to talk to the client, how to figure out what's being offered, and you just don't know. You can have a deal that you think there's no way this is a new construction. There's absolutely no way that USAA can possibly step up and match this $10,000 credit that's happening. First of all, we have the responsibility to let them try, period, end of story. So for no other reason, we need to do that. But second they may have access to a lower rate where they can give some incentives and actually dollar for dollar get that person into a competitive product or we may be able to actually get them onto that new construction site and receive that rate. So again, go by the responsibility. 72% of our transactions and relocation are coming from these people. We owe it to them to try. Um, Latest trends, I don't know why, guys. There's a document. Um, the document is on uh, www.nmreloagent.com uh, or from the dashboard, the My Relocation button, which looks like this My Relocation button with the giant red arrow next to it. And if you go in, you can actually see there's a document there that says USAA Electronic Procedures. And it will tell you exactly what you are supposed to be able to do in terms of getting an electronic um, receipt for USAA. So that's a good document. But for whatever reason, I don't know why, but some of the underwriters are not following that document. 
I wish I could tell you that that something was different and that they were following the document perfectly and that it was a perfect world, but it's not a perfect world and it's not happening. So my suggestion to everybody since we are in the season of 300 closings is that you get a wet signature whenever possible. I know. My buyers are in Thailand. My sellers are in God knows where. They've already moved. I, I, I get all of that, and I wish that I could tell you that we have better answers. What I'm telling you is that there's some inconsistency in how this is being done lately. I have brought it up to the upper ends of the bank, and I will not stop fighting to try to make that consistent. But in the meantime, you possibly can run into a frustrating situation with this. So I would just highly recommend that if at all possible, get a wet signature and, and go with that. Um, I want to just finish on one last thing and show it to you guys. And, I'm, and I'd like you to watch this video real quick. Um, if you go into the re relocation site, which if you notice, it's now called military and relocation, which uh, should draw some people into, you know, what does that mean? So our USAA and NFCU programs are here. And if you click on the USAA program, you're going to come to a video. And I'm going to ask the branch leaders to play this video to you now. But this video is not only here on our website, you can certainly cut and paste this link and send it to anybody that you'd like to. Um, it may be a good way to get AGRs. It may be a good way to build some uh, confidence with a person that you're working with. And um, soon we will actually have this video going out in real spec. So at the time that it comes in and we give the, the deal to the branch, if it's a USAA buyer or seller, this video will be sent directly to the seller saying, hey, we're in the process of getting you a fantastic agent. In the meantime, we just wanted to let you know how we feel about our USAA customers, and we're looking forward to working with you and get, giving you an exceptional experience. So watch the video, guys. I hope you like it. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing, and let's just continue to kick butt and, uh, and take names. You guys are awesome.